Hello everyone and this is my review for Monday Night Raw on September 12th, 2016 and well, again, I kind of have a mixed bag on Raw this week, like it feels like there was some downtime in, in here again and it just, it, it felt a little bit, it felt a little bit weird at time, but there's some, uh, there's definitely some ups to this show as well. Uh, they started off the show with Mick Foley. Uh, and he calls Charlotte out to the ring. They just kind of start cutting a pro uh, cutting a promo. They get interrupted by Sasha, and it's all, and it starts all culminating into what w would be uh, Charlotte's number one contender going into the Clash of Champions or the Clash, uh, as I'm going to probably like to call it throughout the entire time. Uh, so as Sasha's beginning her promo. Uh, about becoming being number one contender and getting a rematch, Bailey comes out, and obviously Bailey's gonna want to get a title shot because well she just beat Charlotte, and it looks like that they were just gonna set up Sasha Banks versus Bailey, which would have been a mistake. It would have been a mistake to just make a one on one match on free TV <laughs> for later on this early on it with uh, Bailey coming up uh, because well. If you watched NXT, you know why. You know why in that sense. So, uh, also being out there throughout the entire time, uh, Dana Brooks out there as well. And she's getting chastised by Charlotte the entire time, forced to apologize for the loss to, ba uh, to Bailey the week before and everything in that sense. And even later on, it's like she's trying to help. Uh, Sasha and like give maybe a suggestion to make that it's like hey maybe a best of seven series would be there and just continually getting chastised by Charlotte eventually Dana Brooke has enough and slaps Charlotte which you know gets the crowd going uh, like they go nuts for this portion as well like you had a good pop for Bailey a good pop for Sasha and you had a good pop for this moment as well like I, I actually like this segment and it sets up um, a, it sets up something for down the road. Like, I feel like they're trying to almost make Dana a sympathetic face out of this. That she, you know, she continually is chastised by Charlotte for mistakes that have happened and everything in that, everything in that sense. Like, you expect a turn somewhere down the road here. Uh, a true turn somewhere down the road. Like, they've been teasing it for a while. Uh, and Mick Foley decides, in this case, to make it a triple threat and puts Dana in there to go along with it. Uh... And during this entire match, actually, a lot of the time was spent around Sasha going after Dana or Bailey going up against Dana. You didn't have a lot of interaction between Bailey and Sasha in, in this case. Again, they were not trying to give away that much of that particular matchup until later down the road, some point in time. Uh, Dana looked a lot better in this match, too. Like, you know, uh, she just came off a lot better. In this match, like you almost felt improvement was coming through Dana Brooke in in the ring in here, and she just looked a lot more comfortable in the ring against both of them inside of the inside of the match. Uh, the match ended with Sasha in, uh, Sasha rolling up Bailey after she had done the Bailey the belly to Dana, and the one weird thing they don't really. Uh, fully reckon, uh, recognize it. Maybe they do something later on. Sasha's shoulders were down as well, but Sasha gets the win uh, in the, in this case. Do they do something with that later? I don't know uh, what they decide to do in, in that case. Uh, if they decide to do anything down the road with that. Uh, but uh, in this case, again, you know, Sasha going up against Charlotte, you kind of expected that uh, in a way. Uh, and like I said, they didn't give too much of a potential sh uh, Sasha and Bailey match away as well. Like I said, they didn't interact that much against each other uh, in the, in this uh, particular match. So we'll see where they go with everything here. See how cl uh, cl the clash goes with Sasha and Charlotte, and will they do anything off the aspect of you know Sasha didn't have her shoulders up as well. We'll, we'll see if they do that or they just kind of sweep that under the rug. Uh, which WWE's also been known to do from time to time. Uh, you also have, uh, so, oh, like I said, we'll see where they go with everything there. Uh, afterwards, you get a Shining Stars segment backstage, and they're trying to sell our truth timeshares in the Shining Stars Resort in Puerto Rico. Um, interesting segment. They get interrupted by Enzo and Cass. 
Uh, pretty good promo from Enzo and Cass here, which eventually leads to a match between Epico and Enzo later on in the show, which was an alright match itself. And they're continuing this whole aspect of the Shining Stars getting one over on Enzo and Cass. Uh, and they do it here in, in a very old classic uh, suplex from outside the ring, inside the ring, and the tag partner trips up the guy and get, uh, causes leverage to get the win. So Epico gets the win in that case. Uh, otherwise, like I said, good promos. Sorry, I've got a little bit of an itch. Um, the otherwise, good promos here from uh, Enzo and Cass. And, you know, came off rather, uh, it came off as an okay match to go along with it. We'll see where they go with everything. Um, let's see, where or we go next here? Oh, yes, we have the highlight reel with Sami Zayn and Chris Jericho, which turned off, uh, kind of turned into this whole aspect of, uh, them talking about Kevin Owens, like what Owens did to Zane and everything in that sense, and it's like, and then of course Zane saying warning Jericho's like, if you think he's actually your best friend, give it time, uh, give it time, he'll turn on you, uh, in everything in that sense, and eventually it's just, it is leading to like Jericho chastising Zane throughout the entire time. Throughout, uh, throughout the entire promo, which I thought was a good promo between the two of them. Uh, and it eventually leads to uh, Jericho attacking Zayn and giving him the Codebreaker, uh, which uh, also ended up get, leading into them announcing a match for Clash of Champions to between the two of them. So you're going to get a match between the two of them at Clash of Champions. So not a bad way of going. I, I thought the segment actually came off rather well. Uh, you have Bo Dallas going up against the local talent. Uh, Bo does, like he, like he did the week before, he kind of, he comes out there like all joyous and everything, and then he cuts a promo in like a really dark and deep voice, uh, ma making him seem a little bit more ominous. Wins the match quickly against uh, the jobber, which, interestingly enough, Got the jobber got a let's go jobber chant throughout the entire match. Kind of funny, uh, kind of funny in that uh, kind of funny in that sense because he gets a little bit of offense and it started a let's go jobber chant throughout the entire uh, throughout the rest of the match. Uh, and then Bo, you know, does his victory lap with his sign again, and you know he's done with that. You also had Nia Jax going up against Alicia Fox. Uh, this was stemming off of the week before and, and everything with the with her promo and. Uh, Naya destroying Alicia's friend and everything in that sense. Naya goes out there, she cuts a promo beforehand saying that she's going to do one of two things. She's either going to uh, beat up Alicia Fox until she gives up or until she can't get up. And that's what ends up happening. She goes out there and beats up Alicia Fox. Like the match technically doesn't end. It, it's, it's technically like a no contest. Uh, it leads uh, it led outside of the ring where um, Nia Jax like just grabs Alicia Fox by the hair and just whips her across the barricade like multiple times and then drives her through one of the other barricades with a spear. I thought it, it, it came off rather well. It just shows like the vicious power of Nia Jax. It was there to put over Nia Jax in that sense. Otherwise like match quality, nothing. But could lead into another match between the two of them down the road, and we'll see where they go with everything about this. But it was definitely there to show off the power of Nia Jax and show her in a different light other than just destroying someone and winning a match. She just goes out there and just destroys Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox and leaves her lying outside of the ring. Uh, so, different way of going about it. Uh, you also had Jinder Mahal going up against Jack Swagger. Uh, they gave Jinder Mahal. A pro, uh, some promo time, and apparently, like his new thing is about, he has found interpeace, and is like he is now the man who comes in peace. And then they have him go up against Jack Swagger. So a giant USA chant gets going through the entire match, and it's like, why, why do you do this match now? Why do you even do this match? Luckily, they have Jinder Mahal win this one. Uh, they're trying to put over Jinder Mahal in this case, which I'm. Kind of glad because like he's returned and has done nothing so far. So they're giving him something. Uh, and we'll see where they go with this. 
down the road here. Uh, like, like I said, we'll see where they go with this uh, down the road. Uh, so throughout the throughout the night, I'm going to start talking about the main event here. Throughout the night, they were talking. Uh, you had backstage promos from Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns and everything. You even had some Seth Rollins and Mick Foley segments, and you had a Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens segment as well. I like the Seth Rollins Mick Foley segment uh, backstage in Mick Foley's office. Office. He's trying to you know trying to get the match to not happen because he just wants it to be one on one and everything in that sense. But Foley obviously wanted to try to do what's right by Roman Reigns because he got screwed out of the title as well. Uh, in the pr- uh, and I thought their promo was really good between the two of them. Uh, and the promo between Owens and uh, Seth, which also had Foley in there as well, a little uh, at towards the end, was also really good. And this was right before the match with Roman Reigns, where um, where at the end Seth. Uh, <clears throat> Seth or Mick tells Seth is like if you get involved, there will be consequences. And I liked the whole aspect of Kevin Owens. He just comes off as he he just comes off as such a good heel again here in this portion. It's like he 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 talks about like the failures and everything, and even chastises uh, Seth Rollins' catchphrase, which is rebuild, uh, which was the. The rebuild, redesign, reclaim. It goes like rebuild, redesign, replace. In there, I I, I just thoroughly enjoyed the segment uh, of the show, um, and it leads into obviously the match with Roman Reigns and uh, Kevin Owens, and it was a pretty darn good match. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You had a moment in there where it's like Seth Rollins does come out and attacks Kevin Owens, causes the disqualification. And obviously you get a couple of agents come out there. And then Mick Foley comes out there. It's like, you know, he gets in Seth Rollins' face big time and everything. So we don't know what the consequences are going to be yet. We just know there's consequences for him getting involved. And Mick Foley is like, no, that's not the way this is going to end. Restart the match. And they go on for another good... It's not one of those restarts and it ends in like two minutes. It goes for another good like 5-10 afterwards. Uh, the, it does eventually lead to uh, Roman looking like he's about to win the match, but Rusev comes out, distracts Roman really quick, and he gets hit by the pop-up powerbomb, and uh, Kevin Owens wins the match, so it stays a one-on-one match. Uh, again, you know, one of those moments of thinking, it's like, they could do the whole aspect that it's not a title match, you can pin the champion here. No, they didn't have the champion get beat. And it does in in a quick distraction, but it still ends relatively cleanly with Kevin Owens going over with a pop up powerbomb, and then after the match, Rusev, um, Rusev actually uh, attacks Roman Reigns some more, puts him in the accolade, and you know Rusev comes out big in the end to go along with it to end the show. It looks like Roman Reigns Rusev is going to continue in this case, and it came off. Rather well, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, also, also before I forget, because I know it was in there, uh, you had two other matches that I've completely glossed over. You had uh, the second, uh, the fifth match was Sheamus and Cesaro. I don't know why I'm glossing over because I thought it was a good match again. But they're having like where Sheamus was winning definitively in his matches. They show the stuff from the O2 is uh, from the O2 Arena in the London match as well. Like Cesaro wins with a with a roll up. Here again, he wins with a roll up and even the, even cheats a little bit by going with the uh, with a, with uh, rope leverage to go along with it. So like they're making Cesaro's wins right now in the terms of his comeback. Like almost feel like they're a little bit of fluke. So like so you want a, almost a more definitive win for Cesaro. In either match six or match seven with, of the series, whenever they go about, because you're assuming they're going to end this series at Clash of Champions with a seventh match in some way, sh- in some way, shape, or form. So you're kind of hoping to see some more definitive wins out of Cesaro with these last two matches, or at least a more definitive win with his last match and, or with the sixth match, and see where they go with the seventh match as well. Uh, also, you had Kofi Kingston go up. Uh, Kofi Kingston with Xavier was going up against Gallows and Anderson. Gallows, Gallows and Anderson win the match 
which is the right thing to do. They need to garner momentum and everything. Uh, before the match as well, you also had the New Day completely trashing the segment before. Honestly, you had a couple segments in there. Uh, I believe they have a bit where Gallows and Anderson meet with Mick Foley as well. And he he was like, that segment was horrible and everything. I was like, no more of that. No more. Period. Uh, and then you had the New Days like going through a whole bunch of stuff. It's like, what can you do in the five minutes and 37 seconds that, um, that the, uh, that, that segment lasted and everything like that? And how much time was wasted uh, from the segment? Like, just complete chastising the segment. And then, of course, Gallows and Anderson come out there. And they just they kind of go back to what they were, which was beating up people, winning matches, everything in that sense. The one thing I wish they would probably do, uh, because sometimes their offense is met with not much of anything in terms of the crowd reaction. You would almost want them to play the crowd, like just try to get them to boo a little bit more in that sense. Like, oh, that's the only nitpick, really. Because honestly, Carl Anderson is good on the mic. Same with Luke Gallows. I... And they're great in the ring and everything in that sense. May, but, like, you can tell there's, like, little small points that the crowd's not necessarily doing much of anything. But, but they get into it towards the end of the match, which I thought was also a pretty good match to go along with it. Uh, again, this week, I know I didn't really say too much in the terms of down points, but there, you know, the, it felt like the show was lacking in certain areas throughout the time. But overall, comes off of, as a relative decent show that goes into the uh, goes into the Clash of Champions a little bit, building some more matches going into it, and we'll see where everything goes uh, with next week's Raw. So that is my review for Monday Night Raw this week. I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.